Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Ian Wright, ex-Arsenal player, obviously loves Arsenal, has some uh, things to say about Mudrik and how he believes uh, Trossard was uh, was obviously the better option. And he's glad they missed out on Mudrik, so we'll talk about that. We'll react in regards to that. We'll also react to an ex-American player also talking about Christian Pulisic, how Chelsea has muddied the waters severely. So we'll talk about all of this. So... Uh, Let's get on with it. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. Oh, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get stuck into this. Ian Wright, they, Arsenal, didn't get Mudrik, and that might be the best thing that happened to them. I don't care what anyone says, Mudrik, and we've seen up to this point, he could have done what he couldn't have, he wouldn't have done what Trossard has done, what Trossard has been doing up to this point. Mudrik, for his own sake, I do feel sorry for him because I don't know if there's anyone in the history of football who's had to have a transfer of that amount of money with so much politicalness around him. It's almost unfair. Look, I mean, I can understand. I can understand why Arsenal fans are feeling a bit giddy, why Arsenal fans are feeling happy about this situation. They're probably feeling, oh my God, we're blessed. We're blessed. God's looking after us. You know, we might have been in the mud with Mudrik and we got ourselves Trossard. And uh, let's be honest, Trossard's been doing well. Look, all I'm going to say about this situa situation is that, of course, of course, Trossard for the time being makes sense. Premier League proven. He's got the Premier League experience. He's come in and he's fit in like a glove for Arsenal Football Club. And perhaps that's what was required. But Arsenal wanted this player badly and they you know, he was their first choice. Obviously, Mikel Arteta saw something in this particular player. And they apparently matched the same fee as us, except for the bonuses, where they put a clause that the player had to win Ballon d'Or for, for them to, you know, trigger one of the one of the add-ons for Shakhtar. Uh, we, on the other hand, we didn't have that particular, um, you know, clause where he had to win a Ballon d'Or in order to get some of the add-ons for Shakhtar Dines. We had a lot more um, realistic you know, add-ons where, you know, during the time of his contract, if he wins the Champions League or if he wins the Premier League, then Shakhtar can trigger those add-ons. Now, look, Trossard is someone I wanted at Chelsea Football Club as well. He's a very, very good player. But, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and try and, try and you know, play that sort of, or uh, the hindsight, uh, just because Arsenal missed out on Mudrik and we got Mudrik, they got... Trossard and and it's all looking rosy right now. I know exactly what Mudrik's going to bring for us, Chelsea Football Club, down the track. I mean, Trossard might be doing well now, but Trossard probably isn't a long term plan. Do you know what I mean? Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens next season. Yeah, they they may have to switch things around. And Arsenal might be flying this season. And this is what I've been, I've been saying. Arsenal don't come across a particular team to me. And once again, we'll see what the future holds. They don't come across a team to me that tells me that they can compete for a long time, much like Man City has and Liverpool to a certain degree, and now even Liverpool has fallen off. It, unless you're mixing it with the big boys and buying the big players, you cannot just keep doing this money ball situation where you, know, you buy players like Trossard or Jorginho or, you know, you keep missing out on your first choice. The more Mikel Arteta keeps missing out on his first choice down the track in the windows, the less and less likely it will be that Arsenal Football Club can maintain this progress that they have seen this season. They may, they, they may end up winning the league this season and, you know, kudos to them. They'll be absolutely ecstatic and they'll be over the moon about it. But if you're not like moving like Man City and if you're not moving like the way we're moving now, sooner or later, it's going to catch up to you. You won't be able to. I think I think they wanted Caicedo in midfield, didn't they? Jorginho wasn't their first uh, choice. They wanted Mudrik, Trossard, they, they ended up getting. Yes, at the time being, it's all looking good. But down the track, it will be an issue. We'll see how long Jorginho ends up you know, being... The, the player for them, do you know what I mean? Next season, teams will catch up, mate. Like Man City will, will only keep 
strengthening. Liverpool will not be in the mud as much as they, they have been this season. They will strengthen. Man United, you best believe, will continue to strengthen. Chelsea Football Club will continue to keep strengthening. And if Graham Potter gets it right, and I know that's a big if, then you best believe Chelsea will come into the frame. And if it's not Graham Potter, it's going to be a new manager. Newcastle, Arsenal Football Club will not have this straight path. So what I'm trying to get to is have your laugh now. Have your say now. This season, you're fine. You're going to get away with it. Yeah, You're in a good position. You're most likely going to win the league. But sustainability. Sustainability. I think in the long run, Mudrik will come good. From what I've seen so far of Michaela Mudrik, from the little bits and pieces, and I know there's a lot of development to happen. I know. But if I was to put a bet down, and I'm not a betting man, but if I was to put a bet down, I'd bank Mudrik to come good for me longer period than, than Trossard, Leandro Trossard. Trossard might be good for the time being, and maybe this is perfect for Arsenal for now because they're looking to win the league. But down the track for sustainability's purpose, I think Chelsea's going to be on top with Mudrik. Make no mistakes about it. I know right now Mudrik, first touch, his last game against Leicester, let's be honest, he's, he's playing as a centre center forward, like a false nine at times, do you know what I mean? That's foreign to him. When we have a settled group, when we have good momentum, when we give Mudrik the opportunity to calm things down, let's be honest, like Trossard is an experienced Premier League player, Mudrik is not. When, when things level out, Mudrik in the long run, has far more firepower, will have far more firepower than Trossard could even imagine. And this is no disrespect to Trossard. Trossard, as I keep saying, looking good now. But Mudrik pace. He's got that passing ability as well. Dribbling. Once it all clicks, once it all settles down, we'll see some of these Arsenal fans and you know ex-Arsenal player, pundit, match of the day pundit, see how they change the, change their tune. Uh, that's my personal belief. Let me know, ladies and gentlemen, what, what do you think? What do you think about Mudrik? Are you worried? Are you worried that Chelsea might have made a mess? Are you worried the amount of money that we've paid? Are we going to get that same level of return? I personally think we will. And what's your thoughts in regards to the comparison, you know, between Mudrik and Trossard? Um, for me, yeah, in the time being, it's working out for, for Arsenal Football Club. But down the track, I think we should be the winner. But let, let me know. Let me know what you think about that. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, ex-USA player turned pundit Eric Wijnaldum. I've got no clue who this particular person is. Chelsea has muddied the waters so severely that there are no road, roads back for Christian Pulisic. The number is rumoured to get as high as 49 million. The team interested are all fighting for a UCL spot, which will be the determining factor. Chelsea has muddied the waters so severely. Muddied what waters? This is the thing. It seems like everything about Christian Pulisic, Chelsea seems to get the blame for. Okay. Have, has Christian Pulisic at times been unlucky? You know, maybe deserved a few more minutes than he has got. But predominantly, Christian Pulisic's health, Christian Pulisic's injuries, what killed his Chelsea career. It's got nothing to do with Chelsea themselves. Christian Pulisic himself cannot be fit. He's had so many injuries during his time at Chelsea Football Club. It's ruined any opportunity for him to shine. His only best moment till now is still post-lockdown, Frank Lampard season. Since then, he's never, ever come back to that level. And since then, he's missed some monumental chances as well. I'm not going to forget last season with Thomas Tuchel. There were some key moments. Real Madrid, Champions League. Christian Pulisic missed, missed some big chances right at the end when we were 3-1 three, three, up. Do you know what I mean? He missed some big chances. I still remember it might have been um, Watford last season. He missed some chances in the FA Cup or Carabao Cup, one or the other. Christian Pulisic is responsible for his own demise of his Chelsea career. Chelsea has not muddied any waters. As I said, maybe here and there, there might have been some times where perhaps he deserved the minutes, but that's about it. But that goes with every other player. 
Instead, Christian Pulisic's dad created a lot of chaos last season. On top of everything that was going on, his father was creating chaos in social media, going around liking failed comp uh, compilation of Kai Havertz and Mason Mount. Then Christian Pulisic goes and writes a book where he complains about Thomas Tuchel. Christian Pulisic is the one that screwed up his own time, tenure at Chelsea Football Club. No one else to be blamed. None of these Chelsea has muddied the waters so severely. And now it's to a point where he needs to go for his own sake and for Chelsea's sake and for the fan base's sake. This whole notion that we've done a dirty, Chelsea's done a dirty on Christian Pulisic is mad, is absolutely mad. Biggest factor is his injury. He's barely fit. He's barely even fit. Just recently, he just came back from another injury. There was a match, I remember, under Frank Lampard. He was going to start, and he got injured in the warm-up. This is the thing. This is the thing with Christian Pulisic. Look, we need to move on from Christian Pulisic. Christian Pulisic needs to move on from us, find new pastures, and we need to look forward to the future. If he was fit, he was going to be sold in January because we brought in Michaela Mudrik. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about Christian Pulisic's scenario. Ex-USA player uh, Eric Wijnalda saying Chelsea has muddied the water so severely that there are no roads back for Christian Pulisic. I mean... So be it. So be it. whoop de doo Ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash the like button if you're here for the first time. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Make sure you subscribe to the second channel where I'll talk about Champions League updates um, and some uh, update on Ian Martz and Burnley as well. Dawn's a madness. So do subscribe to the second channel where I talked about Erling Haaland yesterday. So check that out. Until next time, everyone. Take care. See ya.